In this video, we'll go through solving the first order contribution of our perturbative series expansion to the correction of the state and the energy. And ultimately, we're going to get an expression for this quantity right here. We're going to look at a single fixed state that we're going to label with the index R. So this is the R degenerate eigenstate. And the general idea is that we don't know which degenerate states will form a basis in which our perturbation can be diagonalized. So by diagonalizing a perturbation, we can figure out what the uh, corrections due to that perturbation are. And the way around that is since uh, this set of degenerate eigenstates form uh, an orthonormal basis, then any other state that belongs to, uh, so this is for this degenerate subspace, then any other state in this subspace can be expressed as a linear combination of our original unperturbed eigenstates. So to capture our ignorance as to which, what are the correct states, we're going to uh, consider a generic state, psi r, which will, will be a, a linear combination of our original unperturbed states. And remember here, r is fixed. So what we're trying to do is replace the state and not r which might not be one of the correct states to diagonalize our perturbation to the state psi r, which will form, which will be a correct or a useful uh, degenerate state uh, that will be part of this basis in which delta h can be diagonalized. So this will be what we call a good state. Okay, and just like uh, we had before for any linear combination like this, these coefficients are given by the inner product of the basis vectors with this. Uh, this isn't particularly useful, except for convenience of notation because we don't actually know what psi of r is. So our goal then is we wanna determine the value of these coefficients for every state and not R. If we know the value of these coefficients, we'll know the correct linear combination of our unperturbed states that will, uh, that will be good states to diagonalize our Hamiltonian. So in this way, our corrected state will now be given by the correct uh, degenerate state initially plus this first order correction, second order correction, and so on. And here, the important thing to keep in mind is that these coefficients are knowns and we wanna figure out what, what they are. All right, so we want to, as I said, replace this uh, with this good state in our original first order equation. So everything remains the same. This will be replaced by psi r.
And another important thing to keep in mind here is R is fixed. So we're only looking at what we need to replace, what will replace this state and not R uh, into this, this state. Okay. Since we're interested in figuring out these quantities, we're going to uh, add this uh, bra and not k to both sides of this, of this equation, as that will uh, in part give us, uh, start to give us this expression for the coefficients. Okay, so we want to apply this to this equation. And here L can in general vary between one to N. Okay, so whereas R is fixed, L can be any value between, uh, it can vary from in any value between one and capital N. So this uh, on the left hand side, we get this equation. And on the right hand side, we get this equation. Because our original Hamiltonian is Hermitian, uh, this can operate on this bra. Uh, and this is our original time independent Schrodinger equation. Sorry, it should be n zero. Okay, and this, because it's this state is degenerate with the state N not R, it will have the same energy. So the left-hand side of this equation will equal to zero because you'll end up with EN zero minus EN zero, uh, which kills the left-hand side. In this end, we have a constant that we can remove from in between the brackets and then we have an operator. So we're going to get a matrix element. Okay, so bringing this term over to the left side. Okay, and then we can remove this constant, which is our first order energy correction. Okay, so since the left-hand side is zero, uh, this term over here, we moved it to the left-hand side, which gave us this. And then uh, this term over here, because ENR is a constant, we can take it out of the brackets and we're left with this inner product. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this, just shifting the constant over to the other side for convenience. So this is what our first order equation has amounted to so far. And now we're going to replace this psi r by its uh, expansion. So it's expressed as a linear combination of our original unperturbed states. So on the left-hand side, we pick up a sum 
this k1 to n because there's capital n degenerate states or capital n basis vectors over here we have a coefficient crk and this uh, state n not k and we can remove the sum from in between here and bring it out on the right hand side over here we still have our constant en r1 We replaced Psi R by its linear combination. And then and because CRK is a constant, we can remove it from inside the brackets. So our right hand side looks something like this. Uh, likewise, we can, this is a constant, we can take it out of the brackets. So from here to here, all we've done is uh, remove our constant CRK from inside the brackets. This because we, uh, the basis formed by the degenerate unperturbed states is orthonormal. This will give us a Kronecker delta LK times CRK. So this is uh, similar to having an identity matrix. Uh, so we're going to, we won't collapse the sum. We're going to leave it like this. This quantity over here is a matrix element, which we're going to denote by delta H L K. So we're going to drop the ends for simplicity. So it doesn't get more crowded. So what we end up with, if we bring this over to this side, we get our matrix element delta H LK. We can factor out the CRKs. So we end up with something like this. Okay, and then I'll remind you once again that here R is fixed, K varies because of our sum, and L can be taken from one to N. So what this is, is a system of linear equations for each one of our states uh, for these coefficients C, R, K. So if I were to write this out for all else, what you get is a matrix. So the Kronecker delta means that you have an E and R in the first element uh, when L is one and K is one. Here, L is one, K is one. When L is two and K is one, you get the matrix M and delta H to one and so on. Matrix M and delta H L prime one. This is L is equal to another number L prime all the way until we reach uh, capital N states. This one, you get H22 minus 
en r1 again because of the Kronger delta you're gonna have this en r1s all along the diagonal It's over here, k is equal to two, and so on until you get to h one n, h two n, h l prime n. H and N minus EN R1 because we're still along the diagonal. And our unknown CR1, CR2, uh, CR L prime, CRN. And this is equal to the zero vector. Okay, so this equation written out in matrix form is something like this. You can convince yourself by looking at the first row, doing the matrix multiplication and so on. And you see that for a particular L, you recovered this form. So what our efforts have amounted to then is to figure out the correct state to replace and not R. So that's this one. This one we want to replace this state. Then the coefficients of the linear superposition that will give us the correct state are the solutions to the system of linear equations. Okay, so to be able to have a non-trivial uh, non-trivial solution for CRK uh, and the system of equations that we could write. Okay, so this is the matrix uh, or the system of equations that we wrote in the previous page. We want a non-trivial solution to the system of equations for CR. We need to have that the determinant, uh, there should be an identity matrix here, of E and R one. Is equal to zero. Okay. So what we get then is for a particular state R, the first order energy correction is going to be uh, an eigenvalue of the matrix delta H. And if you generalize this for, uh, so this is for a fixed R, you have to consider this for all R's that can, that span each one of your degenerate states, then what you're left with is determining the eigenvalues of the matrix delta H, and that will give you the first order energy correction uh, for each state. And that's the main result of non-degenerate perturbation theory, or sorry, for degenerate perturbation theory uh, in the case where we're only interested at the first order corrections and the energy. In the next video, we'll finish off uh, with some uh, general comments and important notes uh, for degenerate perturbation theory.